Hi, it's Kelly with uh, Homesteading Hints again this week, and uh, this week we are going to actually talk about uh, fruit trees, and we're going to check the fruit to see what's setting on all of our trees, and, and kind of go through a little bit with diseases and what can be self-pollinating, and others that need pollinators to help set fruit and things like that. Um, first of all, we're we're in actually our chicken pasture, which is where our most of our orchard is located. And uh, we've got uh, some apple trees, and Libby, I think, is showing you the fruit off the apple trees that are starting to set. And they're decent size right now, about uh, the size of a cherry. So they're getting there. Um, and our apples are actually loaded this year and doing really well. That's probably going to be our main fruit this year, it looks like. But we do have uh, actually some peach. We have a few peaches coming up on, the, on this tree. Uh, this is the only one that had any, any peaches set on it. But uh, I would say there's probably a dozen or maybe 15 or 20 in here. Um, it, it was trying to set on fruit about the same time that we got the really cold weather and I don't think that helped it any. Plus it actually was loaded with fruit last year. So they do have a tendency to not be able to produce large quantities year after year after year, at least around here anyway. So we kind of usually figure that there's going to be a rest break um, say every other year or something like that. Peaches it might be every third or fourth year. Apples it usually is every other year. They seem to produce a big crop and the, the chickens are coming through and, and they're going to be on on the video as well. But uh, um, they are actually the ones that p patrol this whole area and that is actually our insect defense against any insects that want to eat the fruit trees and uh, we don't spray our fruit trees. We don't do anything like that to them. Uh, we have a few diseases, brown rot, which is one of the diseases that we can get on the fruit. Um, it, it will set up on it and it'll actually make the fruit kind of almost cocoon. It almost just mummifies it basically. And uh, that can be gotten rid of by just snipping off the branches that are infected. Uh, it's a minor problem, but it can happen. It happens more in a very humid, wet times, um, which we're having right now. but you know, a month from now, it may be dry as heck too, but so you never know. But uh, if there's more airflow in the trees, that helps things like that out. Um, we also have a few issues with, uh, especially on the peach trees, with branch breaking due to the fact that uh, the wind blows hard and it will catch and bust the branches on them uh, a lot easier than the other trees. Um, one thing that we have, and you can see it with this tree, is that that apple trees have a tendency to, the roots are very weak. Um, the, the root system on is just not that strong to hold them up and every time we get a really wet year or time of year with winds, we have a, a chance of pushing the tree over. And this one leans a little bit, it'll still be fine on the production. Um, we'll have to watch it so that it doesn't uh, like overproduce, which I will tell you, you can get, especially on apple trees um, you can get an overproduction you can get it on plums as well a lot of times asian pears and asian pears yeah the asian pears as well which um, we have a few of those we actually have over 40 trees but you have to kind of watch that and make sure the branches don't get too heavy with too much fruit um, a lot of these um, hybridizers have set up uh, fruiting of these trees to be the most important thing and they've set up extreme large quantities of fruit on these trees to the point where it actually weighs the branches down and can break them off. So you have to be careful and if you're going to get that, you watch that over time, if you're going to get that, you just take a few of the apples, the, the plums or whatever, the, the Asian pears off to keep the weight down. So watch that and make sure you're paying attention to that because it does, it does not take very long before that can happen. Uh, the fruits do grow rather quickly. In fact, I checked this peach tree uh, actually last week and I didn't find any of the peaches on there that we found when we came out to check this time. Um, they were just small, inconspicuous, and I didn't even see them up in there, but you can find them now fairly easily. Um, the apples are setting on real well and, and those are fairly easy to find when, about this time of year. Uh, again, a couple weeks ago you, could, you would know they were there because the blossoms were still there, but beyond that um, they were very inconspicuous as well. Um, we have mostly self-pollinating varieties of trees here, um, but saying that, that means that you only need one tree to get fruit. You don't need another one to 
pollinate with. Um, and that is the case on most of the apple trees and at at the garden center actually we we do all self-pollinating varieties pretty much of everything uh it's because we don't most people don't have a lot of room like we do um to produce or to put it in a lot of trees and if you wanted different varieties of fruit you know you don't want to have 10 trees to get five different varieties of fruit so it's kind of nice when they self-pollinate but uh yeah and actually at the garden center now i think we have I believe there's 22 fruit trees left so if anybody's interested in that there's I know uh, Bartlett pear there's I believe the Anjou there's five or six peaches there's Montmorency cherries and several apples I believe there's honey crisp and galas um, so you know you can look into that if you're still looking for fruit trees which right now is a fine time to plant them you can get them in the ground and pay attention to them and and uh, you don't have to you know necessarily over over protect them right now because they'll they'll go through the air for the year fairly easily um, with that so if you're still interested there are plenty plenty of different fruit trees you're, you're not going to be able to get picky as far as the variety you want but you should be able to get what kind of fruit you want at the garden center yet and here we have uh, well, we also have apricots we have the peaches obviously I think I've got uh, eight peach trees uh, I believe eight or nine apple trees uh, three Asian pears, uh, three or four regular pears. We've got a nectarine, we've got an apricot, we've got plum cots, we've got plums, we've got sour cherries, um, we've got a couple of sweet cherries, uh, and it's, well, we have a, a pawpaw, and we also have, uh, actually, we, we do utilize the mulberry as well. We have a white mulberry tree that, that I moved into our, one of our other chicken areas. White mulberries on it, and uh, actually, that's a great tree to have in your chicken yard because the mulberries fall and the chickens eat it, and you can still get what you want from the mulberries. We do produce, or we do take a lot of mulberries and produce uh, jam with them. We've done fruit leather with them, all that kind of stuff. So there's some uses for them as well, even though some people don't like them or believe them to be a weed, which they can become, but they actually are a fairly valuable fruit as well. Pies but, and syrup as well. Oh yeah, yeah, we do syrup as well, so yeah, um, and uh, it, it is really good, I mean, it's it's a good fruit for that kind of stuff, and it is it is a guaranteed producer every year, pretty much. The only thing that you might have issue with is the wind blowing and knocking all the mulberries to the ground before you can get them, um, just because they don't hang on once, they don't hang on once they ripen very well, they, they fall to the ground quite quickly, so, um, so, what was that? It's starting to sprinkle. I don't know oh, if you want to okay. get your video done before okay, it pours. Yeah, well, yeah, we are trying to beat the rain. Here it comes. But, uh, um, okay, so I think that's it. Okay, now, one thing that we do have issue with as far as the disease goes is fire blight. Um, it, it is a problem. It, it can kind of cross over from tree to tree, and it will kill the whole tree. It's probably the worst disease we have. The brown rot, which I mentioned, is not a huge issue, but the fire blight can become one, and you have to be careful. Um, that is one where you can take the branches out as they as they go bad, but you'll need to cut them back away from the infected way, clear out of the way. And so you'll need to cut down the branch quite a bit or take the entire branch off of it. Um, and be careful that when you're cutting that, you don't touch another branch because it can be trans transmitted that way from one branch to the other just by touch. Um, so it, it is a very difficult one once it gets on things. Um, so we just kind of, that's one, I, it's also not easily treatable. So um, there are some, you know, some fung fungicides and things like that you can use at right, right amount of time. But again, like I say, I don't pay much attention to that because I don't use any of the chemicals. I'd rather not eat the chemicals, so I don't. Um, but you, if you're going to get good crop production, you probably will have to figure out some way to maintain those sort of things and keep the diseases at as a manageable of a problem as you can get um, and it, the best way is to try and just keep them free from it and keep that disease out of your stuff if you can so do you have problems with webworms or japanese beetles um well actually web we have had a few problems on our plums with some webworms uh those can be taken care of uh, usually by snipping that branch off 
and taking it and disposing of it, uh, burn it if you want to. Yeah, that's usually the best way of doing it because that's it. They, it's very hard to spray a webworm because it's inside of a cocoon type thing, and they and the spray doesn't get in. It may kill the outside ones, but it doesn't get into the center where the large masses of them are and where the eggs are laid and that sort of thing. Um, so it doesn't kill all of them. And uh, Japanese beetles do absolutely love fruit trees, um, though we don't have many problems. And you know, knock on wood, I, I truly believe it's because they are in the chicken yard, and a Japanese beetle is not a great flyer so the minute they hit the ground especially and I will show you later on I have a, a trap set up that the chickens know what Japanese beetles are and they absolutely love to eat them and so I can guarantee you that if there's Japanese beetles flying around and they hit the ground the chickens will be on them so if they are on these trees and they blow off which they will do because again they they aren't great flyers but they are thick and and but uh, if they come to the ground the chickens will get them so we don't have a we don't have a huge problem with the fruit trees getting eaten by japanese beetles but i know that they definitely are a problem in a, with a lot of fruit trees um i think that's about it uh it looks like we're about ready to get rained on so uh i guess we'll call it good and and thanks for showing up and we'll see you again next week